The following is a rebroadcast of TV50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, oh look at this. Look at that! He's, he's got it! Look at him, ready! Go for it, man! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by the Washington Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Got Looks good. good. That's good to go. It's a home run. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Voting Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Burke. Hi, everybody, and welcome back for the second half of semifinal week here on the Winds of New England. Yesterday, of course, we hope you were with us for the doubles semifinals, and today now the singles semifinals. Doug Brown here, as always, with my partner Dan Murphy, and uh, we're left with our top three seeds for this uh, last two weeks of this series. And uh, three thoroughbreds at that. Mm. Uh, any one of these is going to be a welcome addition to the Tournament of Champions. All right, let's meet uh, our two competitors for today. First of all, our number three seed. He comes here from Fremont, New Hampshire, to try and make it two wins in a row, Jack Quinn. Jack Quinn carries an average of 128, has a high single of 193, his roll-off score 708. And the number two seed, of course, Jack having come off that win last week against Jim Flynn, now he tries to make it two in a row, and he'll face our number two seed from Londonderry, New Hampshire, Tim Lipke. Okay, Timmy comes in averaging 129, has a high single of 200, and his roll-off score at 712. Well, of course, we have uh, money as third-place prize money for the runner-up today. The winner will move into the championship show next week against our number one seed, Paul Berger. And in addition to that money being on the line, we also have $160 in the bonus ball contest. That comes up at the end of the hour. We're expecting a good one. Don't go away. It'll be Jack Quinn and Tim Lipke right after these words. Stay with us. Once again, our top three bowlers remain. Jim Flynn was the story early as he threw a 390 to beat Phil Clough in week one, and then he threw a 394 last week, but it wasn't good enough. Jack Quinn with a 407, a big come from behind win, coming from 26 pins down in the last four boxes to win it. So now in the semifinals, Jack Quinn tries to make it two in a row. Tim Lipke, the opposition today, and the winner of this one faces Paul Berger next week for the championship match, and Jack Flynn is ready to get us started. The uh, runner-up today will receive $250, third-place prize money. The winner, of course, moves into the championship, Jack Quinn. Rhymes with Flynn, though. No? That's true. <laughs> we had just too many Flynns and Quinns. And I knew I was going to get messed up. Uh, poor Jim, I changed his first name last week, so... <laughs> <laughs> we had it all covered. That's right. <laughs> Six, seven, ten for Jack, trying to make a mark in the first box. That close. Well, if these last three bowlers bring their best bowling, boy, we could see some scores. Well, all three of them went over 700 in the five-game roll-off that they competed in to get here. So that's 140-plus for all three of them for five games. Of course, it's different here with the lights and the cameras and the different pacing and so forth, but all of them capable of throwing the big numbers. And Jack Quinn threw a pretty big number last week. Watch out. Thought maybe he might sneak through the middle there. Very efficiently done for a 10 box on the spread eagle. A pair of 10s it is. Tim Lipke, first singles appearance for Tim since December of 1991. Came in as the number two seed that month, too. Knocked off Glenn LeBlanc in the semifinals before losing to Paul Berger in the championship match. Last time Tim was here in singles, uh, that was just before Christmas, 1991. He threw a 404 and lost. He had a 174 middle game and that was not good enough to win. <laughs> Spares it up here though in box number one. Nice shot it was too for Tim. Take a quick look at that. Head pin will go down and take out the seven pin. Oh, 
Tim right back on the head pin and looks like it might be a little full. He does get the split, but with Wood to help on the 410. Wood to help, maybe. You never know. Let's see. Not quite. The early eight pin lead for Tim Lipke. Of course, one of these two guys to advance to the championship match next week and possibly a spot in the Tournament of Champions. Uh, Tim Lipke has appeared in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. That was back in 1991. Jack Quinn has never qualified. And of course, next week's number one seed, Paul Berger, has been in all five of them. <laughs> Jack for the spare, can't make it happen. It's an eight, 28 now through three for Jack Quinn. Tim Lucky already at 28 after two. Just off the mark oh, on the coming head back. Pin, but look out. <laughs> the one and the three would rest up against the one and the three. For spare number one for Jack Quinn. Boy. Tim Lipke's been all over the head pin. Just the five pin for his second mark of the match. He's there. Tim from Londonderry, New Hampshire. The assistant manager at the Londonderry Bowling Center. So those of you who've been in there, run into Tim, I'm sure. He kicked the five pin out, leaves himself just the four, seven, eight, fill on the spare. Chance to make it two in a row. Yes. No, no problem there. And three out of four. Jack Quinn now. Back to fill the spare that he left in the fourth. He missed it last week. Boy, what a match he had. And as Doug mentioned last week at the closing, he was down as, by as much as 40 pins at one time in that match. Ooh, a little too fine there. The 10 bucks. Before we go any farther, Dan, I want to uh, say hello to a very special regular viewer of Stars and Strikes and Stars and Strikes doubles and also a heck of a bowler himself. Our good friend Jeffrey Langlois from Nashua, New Hampshire. Jeffrey was, uh, was here in person with us a little That's bit right. earlier in the series with his mom Marty and her cousin Kathy. So hello to Jeffrey and his family. All right, Jeff. Just missing the spare, Jack Quinn sliding by the four pin. Gets it this time, 63 now through six. Tim Lickie, 56 in the fourth, plus the bonus. And I understand we may have a surprise guest young bowler at the end of today's show, too. There's been rumors flying around. Yeah. Keep an eye on the credits today, at the end of the show. Seven on the spare for Tim Lipke. One's nine and ten. Piece of wood be oh, just to the left of the head pin. Well, <laughs> uh, he used it. <laughs> 
73 half for Tim. Tim and his wife uh, Wendy have two children, Shane and Shauna. Tim with that 129 average. That time through the center. Tim was with us uh, in doubles competition earlier in the year with Bill Norton. They lost their match to Ed Jerome and Brian Fuller, the team that eventually ran the table, four straight wins. And Brian Fuller in attendance at this taping the last time I checked. Yes, he's still here. You see Jack's high triple, 440, uh, 488. He also has a high single of 193. Almost. Ooh, good effort. On the six, seven, and nine, and he almost threw that over there. Just the one mark so far for Jack Quinn, but almost a great one here. A little farther to the right. That was a quick slow mo. <laughs> quick mo. Quick mo. <laughs> Triangle in the left-hand corner, four, seven, eight. He's wood out in front, but also one right behind that. You never know. Yeah, all go. around it, but it won't happen. Anytime you got one looking at you, it kind of deadens the one out in front. You don't get the full effect of the dead wood going back into the three pins, and in this case, it left the eight pin. One of our participating sponsors for this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire, right on Route 97, Main Street in Salem. Come to Salem and save Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Tim just sliding by the head pin, but he'll have something to shoot at. The 1, 3, and 10. And there it is. Very nicely done. Fourth mark of the match for Tim Lipke, all spares. In fact, we're looking for our first strike from either bowler. I don't think we'll have to wait too much longer. No. Like, maybe now. <laughs> I just kind of had that feeling. Strike on spare for Tim Lipke. Looks like you uh, read the program. <laughs> <laughs> I bought one. There's somebody going around selling them. I, I bought one. In the eighth frame, that will be a strike. Oh, almost another one by Jackie Quinn. Everything but the six pin. Spare in the ninth. I don't know if you could see it or not, but Jack immediately turned around after he threw that ball. He knew it was going to be off target to the left. Just three on the spare. And now he's left with the high-low Jack. with an obstinate piece of wood. Yeah, I don't know, that's the, that's the second time in two weeks that we've seen that made. Of course, that was with wood, you know. 
What, what some, is so hard some, about some that? Some places they pay you for making that shot. I don't see how it's so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Lipke in cruise control right now, leading by 30, filling on a strike. Well, let's see for Tim. Uh, those two pins remaining are a lot closer together than they at first were, the two and the five. And that piece of wood in front is going to be very close to the deadwood line. Let's see what the ruling is from Cindy Sissom. Uh, she's moving right along, so yep. I'm sure it must be out. It is, in fact, out. So Tim's only worry here is trying to forget that the pins are off the sp uh, one pin is off the spot. That five pin. Go right at it. He does for the spare on strike. 20 more for Tim Lipke. And he is piling up a lead here early. Well, Jack probably figures I got him right where I want him. <laughs> <laughs> Just like last week. Seven drop on the spare. One six ten left, and don't think that wood to the right in front of the uh, six and ten is. You're going to have to go after the head pin, have the ball or the head pin go down and take the 610. Ooh. Hmm. He thought he had it. So Tim won't break 150 <laughs> for the first game. He'll have to settle for a 148 opening game and a 43 pin lead after one. Tim Lipke off to the big start here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Semi-final action continues. Tim Lipke and Jack Quinn in a minute. Tim Lipke, set to go. Game number two, with a 43 pin lead. I like that. Put it in the bin, and then you win. <laughs> it's just that easy. <laughs> Tim a little full, but... Got a good break when he kicked yep. that four pin out. 6-10. And there's the mark, number seven of the match for Tim. Seven marks out of 11 boxes. Pretty good ratio there. On the head pin again. By my count, he's only missed twice. The first ball. Let's see. Ooh, Ooh, I thought he had that one. You know, I think he would have if the wood wasn't there. I think the wood prevented the three pin from being sliced into the seven. And a nine. Let's see what happened with that down. Ooh, right yeah. behind it. Spun right yep. in back of that seven pin. Jack Quinn now. Well, right in this exact same point of the match last week, Jack trailed by 40. Three, six, four, seven, piece of wood between the three and the six. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yes. He's going to be trailing by around 40 again. Depending on what he does with this mark. He made that shot look awful easy. Oh, oh a big one right there. Could it be happening again? <laughs> He's got it started here in the second game. Strike on spare. Dynamite strike. Guy just doesn't quit. He just keeps plugging along. how quickly this game can change. <laughs> Two, four, seven, and left, three, six, right, piece of wood behind the three and the six for Tim. Oh, oh what a oh, shot. Oh, yeah. 
Well, he just missed the one prior to that, and this one was a dandy. Watch the wood help him. Kick it forward. Put a star next to that one if you're scoring. Right back there again. Again, he's kicking that extra pin out. He threw his hands up. He knew he was a little full. The six and uh, four seven were knocked out of there for him. Leaves him just a three six. Another legitimate spare leave. And Make there it, it is. Nine marks in 14 boxes for Tim Lipke. Jack Quinn is working on a strike. We haven't seen a double strike in a long, long time. Number of weeks. Well, let's see. It's not going to be a conventional one if it goes. Wow. Uh, hardly a conventional eight drop no. either. The 1-8. Well, chance to make it three in a row for Jack. He's on the head pin. He's got a good shot at making this one. Yep. Yes. Had to wait just to be sure. He's trying to keep pace. Timmy's put two marks up. Jack needs a good fill and another one just to keep pace. And Picked up seven on the lead right now. Just sliding by the head pin, but not too bad. Just the one, three, and ten left. And real favorable wood behind the three pin that should take out the ten. It's got to have the head pin, though. Oh, yeah. A little chain reaction there for Jack Quinn. And hey, things are heating up here on Stars and Strikes. You don't want to go away. This semifinal match will continue in a minute. Tim Lipke. Boy, it got quiet in here. <laughs> <Didn't it? laughs> you could hear every roll of that ball as it went down. Again, he trips out the five pin and leaves him another decent spare leave in the four seven and two pieces of wood out in front should be no problem. You only get two balls a frame, don't you? That's right. That's all these guys are using. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while, one. That's eight marks and nine boxes for these two bowls in this second game. And that's ten in the match for Tim Lipke, and for, I believe, only the third time today, he misses the head pin. One, three, and one, two, four, six, and ten. Piece of wood that could help him with a 6-10. He used to put it in the 1-2 pocket. Now he's going to be the inside. Oh, ho, ho, ho. For the first, uh, first half of the match, Dan, first 15 boxes. Tim Lipke with a 2-24. Now at 86 through 6 here in the second. So uh, 224 should be 448, right? Yeah, will that be enough? <laughs> no. <laughs> the way these guys are going right now. There's Jack working on a spare. He's got four in a row. Make it five. Oh, they're both right. Yes, sir. <laughs> wow, would that have been ugly? <laughs> I mean, that was a, almost a perfect ball. It's nice and tight in the one-two pocket. Would have been a shame if these two pins stood up. The six and the eight, and they both go. There's five in a row for him. He's 87 and two bonus balls to come. Uh-oh. <laughs> This should double. No. <laughs> oh, he's got a piece of wood to the right. I think he can drive the ball right straight through the wood and clip the five. Let's see. That's what he's going to do. Yep. Another one. Six in a row. 107 and pounding. Whew. Mercy. <laughs> These guys aren't even breaking a sweat. They don't throw <laughs> enough balls to <laughs> get heated up here. Oh, oh yes. Right back. <laughs> There's a replay of that one. Buried it. Right in that 1-3 pocket. Each bowler now with two strikes. Another oh, one. Oh, look out. <laughs> the six pin. Yeah. 
never a doubt about that one. 14 boxes right here. We've got two opens. What's the matter with Timmy? He's got the second frame <laughs> open and the sixth frame open. <laughs> Jack working on a spare. Six marks in a row. Looks pretty oh. good. Oh, look better than that. Hang on, pretty. hang on. Oh. <laughs> the 10 pin for seven in a row. Oh, he's got seven it. in a he's row. He's got it. He's also taken 30 pins off the lead here in game two. Taking 30 pins off, and Tim Lippy's got it 106 through 7, 116 in the eighth. <laughs> another one! Oh, another nine drop, this time the nine pin. This for eight in a row. Eight in a row. Yes! Oh, my! He gets a high five from Tim Lipke after that one. Eight marks in a row for Jack Quinn. And look at the fills. 10, 10, 7, 10, 10, 9, and 9. Tim Lipke working on a spare. He drops 7. He's got the head pin in the 610. Piece of wood that will help him. Got to be thinking head pin. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's seven marks in this game for Tim Lipke, 13 in the match. Now on lane 31. Ooh, right through the oh, middle. We're going to have to earn one. <laughs> <laughs> Not that they aren't earning the others, but this is going to take some skill. Trying to split the three and the six. Got a shot. Oh, wow. just by the three. Well, Tim's going to have another game in the 140s. Oh, that one got away. A 145 for 293. Jack Quinn has eight marks in a row in this second game. Working on a spare. Oh! No breaks there. Full on the head pin. Gives him 150 through eight. Well, of course, the question is now, how much of a lead will Tim Lipke have at the end of this second game? He had 43 pins coming in. He's going to have... Well, probably... Well, with a mark, it'll less be down than 30, around 10, certainly, yeah. yeah. And then it could be a lot less if Jack puts a mark up here in the 10th. Less than 20, I should say. And less oh. than 10 with a mark, and there is a spare leave. 1 3. First time he's missed a head pin, but he got a break. Already at 160. What a show these guys are putting on. It's down. Yes. <laughs> 170. Well, if, if you're wondering, the highest all-time single string here on Stars and Strikes was Brian, uh, rather, Rick Farwell with a 196. We have had six games of 180 or better. And that was like 10 years ago. Right. <laughs> That's right. We've had six games of 180 or better. A strike here for 180. Get over. Yeah, it'll be 179 for Jack Quinn. Wow. 179. <laughs> and the difference in the match is now just nine pins. We've got one game to go here. It's not over. Semi-final week rolls on after these messages. Already four bowlers have qualified for the sixth annual Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, which uh, begins not too long from now. Joe Ashline, Peter Flynn, John Petorsky, and Mark Gregory, with the scores that you see, have already advanced to the field of six, and uh, we have two spots open. 
It could perhaps be one of these two gentlemen that we're watching bowling today. Either Jack Quinn or Tim Lipke, or it might possibly be Paul Berger. He's waiting for the winner of this match, and uh, if next week is anywhere near as good as this week, could be another great one. This has been oh, terrific. Jack came from a long ways back, but he's still nine pins down. Oh. The four and ten. He's got to go after the four pin. Hope he can jump the four pin over. <laughs> nope. Oh, Nothing is safe. That would, didn't miss that by much. Oh, almost got it that way. You were talking at the break. For that 179, Jack Quinn threw 20 balls, and that's including the fill on that last spare in the 10th. Not a bad game. Didn't waste any. <laughs> and he'll have something to shoot at here, perhaps, depending on what the wood does on the 4-7. Yes. Spare in the second. Tim Lipke turned to Jack Quinn after that last game was over and said, hey, want to roll doubles? <laughs> <laughs> for two game total. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Tim Lipke on the triangle. Yes, that is mark number 14 in 21 boxes for Tim Lipke. Tim only threw 22 times in game two. He has been able to kick out extra pins, Dan, going through the middle. That time he did again, but not quite the one he wanted. He wanted the two pin to go. He may want to take a piece of the two pin and maybe clip that wood at the same time. Now he's going for the complete uh, cut shot. Very difficult one there. Parallel with each other like the two and the three pins are. Might have been hoping that he could snap that back wood forward again. Instead he takes the ten. The lead is up to 16, temporarily anyways. You can see the cursor flashing on the spare in the second for Jack Quinn. Our gallery getting into this match. Ooh. Oh, that was right in the one-two pocket. Eight pin drop. Takes another pin off the lead. It's now eight. And a difficult, difficult spare leave. This has to try to come up as high as he can on the wood. Oh, what a yes. shot. Are you kidding me? These guys are sharp. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Most people at home, if they've never bowled before, just watch it, they think, well, what's so big about that? That's He's shooting at something that's probably two and a quarter inches in diameter. It's incredible to throw something 60 feet and be able to hit that target. Oh, oh. Right on the nose. Well, all this does is give him a chance to make another great shot. I was just going to say, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Well, oh. well, <laughs> that close. <laughs> well, the fellow in the plaid shirt there, if he had his way, it would have been over. <laughs> <laughs> he was right into it. Ten bucks. <laughs> 51. Ho hum, just another 51 after four. Actually, Jack, I don't know if you saw it, he put the ball between the two and the four on the way by there to start that roller. Tim Lipke oh, comes for a backdoor back. strike. Right here, looks like the three six. There goes a six into the three for the strike. Lead up to that point was just four. Oh, oh maybe. Oh. No. Never touched the five. This for spare on strike. 
Yes. And we will pause right here. Tim Lipke still with the lead. It is 14 pins. He has a mark working in the fourth. Still plenty of room left in this semifinal match. We'll be back. Well, somebody's going to win this thing. I don't know who yet. It's quiet again. <laughs> EF hunting around or something or what? <laughs> this is kind of eerie. The one, two, and seven. No, I don't like the wood, though. Let's see. Playing it outside. Oh, What's the matter with the wood, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go near it. <laughs> Spare in the fifth, 61. Both bowlers well on their way to 400. Fortunately, one's going to go home. The other one's going to go into championship week. A little full there. That's what either bowler needs now, is to make a cut shot to keep the string alive. and. Pretty close. Almost. We've had 30 marks already. Wow. In this hour. Baby, nice, nice. 77 through 6. This could be a very critical two box uh, turn for Tim Lipke, Dan. He's already got the lead back up to 14, plus he's got the fill on this mark. If he were able to put at least one more mark up, he could have the lead over 20 with four boxes to go. Seven is the fill. Two, four, and six. Two pieces of one. One's next to the uh, six pin, the other one behind and almost in between the two and the four. Going the right Ooh. side, not quite. A reminder that the Tri State Mega Bucks Tournament of Champions. The singles version will be taped here at Park Place Lanes on Route 28 in Wyndham, New Hampshire on Tuesday, March 22nd. That's a week from Tuesday. And either then or whenever you stop by here at Park Place, whether to bowl or whatever, be sure and stop in say hello to Rodney Cronin and our good friends at the Willow Tree North restaurant located right inside Park Place Lanes. The Willow Tree North. Great food, great prices. You'll like it. Wow. It's where the crew eats. Whoa. Uh, Tim is just laughing. I said wow. <laughs> Timmy's expression said wow. <laughs> that was uh, not one of the better balls. It certainly has to rank up in there in this match today. That was dead in the one-two pocket, and he gets the six, seven, eight, and nine. Piece of wood uh, in between and out front of the seven and the eight. Might try that. I think the problem pin is probably going to be the six. Now he's going to try to cut the six into the nine and all the way across. Didn't work. So he's open these two. Lead's going to be around 15. Yes, that's what exactly. it is. Yep. 15 pin lead for Tim Lefty with four boxes to go. Tim has the advantage, if you call it that, by bowling the final two frames. Oh, that's the first time in a long time. Either bowler is missing the head pin. Let's see. Right oh, back. Oh, oh, right back. Oh. <laughs> that's a very difficult shot. It really is. So you got the five, eight, and nine in the back, and you have to keep the ball in play. And Guys, I'm making it look easy. Gets a great oh, mix. Oh, yes. Strike out right there. Oh, he got a great oh. mix on oh. that ball. He's been, he's been hitting the 1-2 pocket, especially in lane 31. That time he was real light in the 1-3. Looks like the 7-10. 10. 10 goes, and finally the 7. For strike on spare. 
Tim Lipke. Oh, yes! <laughs> what else can we say? <laughs> wow. Well, missed the head pin, but he's just got the one and the three. This to keep pace. Protecting a 15 pin lead. Oh, oh no. Well, that could change things a little bit. Now Jack is still going to need at least one more mark. Two would face Timmy, force Timmy to get one. The lead is 14, so this Phil on the strike should bring it down into single numbers, but he's going to need at least one more. And then, of course, two more would force Timmy to get one. Well, it seems a shame one of these balls has to lose. Oh, that's Both bowlers now already over 400. <laughs> the 5, 8, and 10. Piece of wood, he's going to try to sweep from left to right. Oh, he's high. Nope. High. Not only did he not get the spare, but he only got seven on the strike. That'll reduce the lead to seven. Ooh. That could be costly right there. Yep. Going to have to have a mark here in the 10th to force Tim Lipke to do something. There is a big first ball, the nine drop. Oh, you don't want to cap this. You never know what happens when you cap the wood. He just didn't think. He just picked the ball up. He's right on it. Spare. 17 marks for Jack Quinn, and he's got one ball to throw. I would say he would need a strike to force Timmy to mark to win the match. out the nine drop 141 for Jack Quinn congratulations from Tim Lipke now Tim's got to go up and see what he can do about winning this match 425 Timmy needs a 132 to tie 210 but oh no yeah 210 boxes would tie That's so he correct. does need a mark to win the match 20 pins ties 21 wins so he needs a mark to win the match Oh my. Going after the 3 6. Nope. So it'll come down to the last box. Yeah, and I dare say he's not going to get a 10 out of this. It'd be a great shot if he does, so he's definitely going to need a mark now. 8. It comes down to the final box. Tim Lipke must have a mark and three on it to win. Let's watch. Looks pretty good. Oh, wow. It'll be a single pin, the five. And some help might be coming. Well, maybe. <laughs> he certainly doesn't want to cap it. Oh, no! No. Jack Quinn has won the match. <laughs> he has done it again. The 10 box, 130, a 423 is not good enough to win for Tim Lipke. What a match. 425 to 423. For the second week in a row, Jack Quinn comes from 40 plus down to win. We will talk about the championship match next week and have more on this one in a minute. Don't go away. Welcome back, and what a terrific semifinal match we just saw. You figure that uh, 423 is going to win most of the time, and most of the time it does, but today it wasn't enough. Well, you saw two classic bowlers go at it, and uh, I was just a joy to be part of this. This is, this is great. Uh, all kinds of shots, uh, never gave up. Each bowler came back at each other, and uh, 
Boy, I'm tired just watching. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll have more to say about next week's final in just a minute. But first of all, a round of applause, please, for our runner-up, Tim Lipke. Tim, come on up. A check for $250 right here. And uh, I know both of you guys were working hard. And uh, congratulations. Uh, obviously, rolling a 400 and, and not winning is something that's happened here before. But that was... That was just an unbelievable match by both of you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It was an excellent match, and I'm sure everybody's really going to enjoy it. Yeah. Jack said this morning, when, before we started this match, that his car broke down. I wished it had. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't not enough, I guess. Huh? He's got Didn't seem many, to bother him. He's got too many connections for rides, I guess. I don't know. But he, he deserves it. That, nine, that five pin with the plank in the last box, and it's like, you're going to remember those. But, well, hey, we'll be back. I'm, I'm sure you'll be back to try him again sometime. All right. I'll get him next time. All right. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And now Jack Quinn for the bonus ball. $160 uh, on the line. Another high five from Tim Lipke on the way by. And uh, let's see if we can give away some more money here. $160 now. Oh, boy. He's still throwing them. What else? What? <laughs> <laughs> no strike. Uh, come on over, Jack, and uh, let's see if we can't get a winner on that nine drop. Not a winner, I'm afraid, for Etta. Cleveland. I believe it is Etta Cleveland from Penacook, New Hampshire. Etta's guess was seven, so not a match. That means we'll be up to $170 next week. Slide right in here, sir, oh. so, that, uh, so that we can get you on camera. That, I uh, away with well, well, yeah, so, you know, you've got, you've got a, a pattern is developing here. You see, you fall 40 pins behind, and then you start bowling, right? Well, <laughs> I'd rather not have it that way. <laughs> well, was this similar to last week in, in that something changed from you just got yeah, more comfortable? Just, you just get up there when you're first swing and you're overexcited and everything. You mm -hmm. just start pushing a little bit. And then once the match gets going, you settle down, well, and then hopefully it changes. <laughs> well, you, you've, come, you've come from 40 pins or more behind uh, twice, so now Paul Berger in next week, no trouble, right? Oh, <laughs> he's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to it. Thanks very much, Jack. Thank you. Congratulations once again. Another uh, terrific match. Let's spin over to the, uh, to the ladder to show you who's remaining now. We're down to our final two bowlers in this series. It'll be number one seed Paul Berger against number three seed Jack Quinn next week in the championship. Can we top that? I don't know. The potential is there with uh, Paul Berger coming in, but uh, I can't wait. All right, don't forget, next weekend, championship weekend here on the Winds of New England, Saturday at 12 noon for Stars and Strikes doubles, and then back here Sunday at noon for Jack Quinn going for three in a row against number one seed Paul Berger. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole Winds of New England crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks for joining us.